Hello guys, welcome to another video in my build of the Airfix 124th scale Spitfire. In previous videos I've built up and painted the cockpit, I've built up the ammunition bays and the wings, and I've built and painted the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. In this video I'm going to bring those parts together so we can get the Spitfire ready for painting. So if you saw my earlier videos you'll realise that this is how we left the ammunition bays in the wing. These need painting before the wings can be closed, so I gave everything a coat of Vallejo metal colour aluminium. But as you can see, I did a really bad job there of filling those two eject pin marks in the innermost bay, the, the rightmost bay on our screen. Unfortunately, because I didn't fill and sand those before I started to build the ammunition bays, they were very hard to get access to, and it was very hard to sand them down. I did eventually get to a point where I thought these were passable, but of course in reality a better result would have been possible if I'd done this earlier. Ultimately the tool that saved me was some really narrow 5mm wide sanding sticks from AK that really allowed me to get into those small recesses. Before they could be added, the details like the ammunition belts needed painting. We have the option for black tipped or red tipped ammunition, which I'm guessing are different types. I think possibly red tipped is incendiary. I went for the red tips just because they stand out nicely against the other colours. At this point I was also a bit unhappy with the Tamiya X10 gunmetal which I'd applied on the machine guns and cannon. So I went back and I base coated those in matte black. Then did quite a heavy dry brush of a metallic grey XF56 over the details. The relevant parts could then be put into place. The pipework here is Vallejo metal colour dark aluminium, so it contrasts nicely with the background colour. These were airbrushed, but you can also brush paint the uh, Vallejo metal colours just as easily. I was really happy with the results on these. I'm still not sure what that empty bay behind the ammunition belt is designed for. Things look a bit rough right now, but once we put the top of the wing in place, everything is closed up nicely. Of course, we can also add the covers to each of these bays, except the one with the cannon and the, uh, the feeder belt, because that sticks out too far. And as I mentioned in the previous video, the instruction manual is very clear about that. If you want to close the wing up, uh, don't include that part. On the other wing, the starboard wing, I've included the cannon but I haven't included that part so I can close the wing fully on the starboard side. In my most recent video I had some uh, fun, is perhaps maybe not the right word, building the engine frame and getting these pipes into place. Both of those pieces now need some touch-ups because of the, uh, the d difficult and the tight fit on that. But otherwise this section is more or less complete. However, I did realise that we really do need to attach the engine to the front of the fuselage before we put the fuselage in place. And we need to put the fuselage in place when we put the wing tops on really, just so that everything lines up nicely. So we needed to finish the engine. One interesting piece is this V-shaped pipe here which doesn't actually connect to anything in the engine itself. But we have to sort of rest it in place here so that we can bring the fuselage forward and they go into these holes here on the front of that bulkhead. So there's quite a few parts to get into place with the green frame going onto the green bulkhead and the copper pipes going onto the silver bulkhead that's part of the wing spar. Anyway, that V-shaped piece is basically left lying there while we glue the engine onto the mounting. Then we can start to add the connections between the engine and the bulkhead. I don't know what these parts are, I'm afraid. Uh, 
There are a couple of really fine pipes that have to go into the engine. But they do generally have very clear positive attachment points. They've been painted in NATO black, really just to give that contrast there between the, the different sort of shades of very dark grey and black. This tank then attaches quite loosely really to the bottom of that engine frame. I also need to paint the Rolls-Royce logo on the top of the engine. The multiple pieces of detailed construction that we put together in the previous video get hidden behind the spinner, so they've only received a base coat of black. At this point I added the air intakes for the underside. The radiators were airbrushed in Vallejo metal colour. Notice how each of these pieces somewhere inside them has a P or an SB for port and starboard, making it quite difficult to mess up. Faces which would be visible once the air intake was attached to the bottom of the wing were given a coat of NATO black. As you can see it's very clear where these fit and they're going very snugly. We then have the addition of a few pieces of pipework. There is a flap or a door at the end of those air intakes which can be positioned opened or closed but I will add those right at the end of the assembly process. So dry fitting things several times it became clear that when I put the tops of the wings on it would be very wise to put the fuselage on as well to ensure that everything lines up nicely. And it became clear that in order to put the fuselage on, I would need to put the engine in place too. So that's quite a lot of moving parts to get uh, working together. It's going to be quite difficult to get those right, but of course, if I do them individually, it's going to be quite easy to get them wrong. We also have these sort of uh, shoulder pieces, which go here just at the front of the wing. Their fit is fine, but because they've got tabs on them, they have to go in really before the fuselage goes in or before the wing top goes in, like so. So those are two more pieces I need to put in at the same time. There is supposed to be a small clear lens that goes just here, which is the gun camera lens, I think. Um, I kept mine in a very safe place. Um, and when I find out where that safe place is, uh, I might have a go at trying to put it back in, but uh, I'm not quite sure where it's disappeared to. So here's the Spitfire with those pieces put together, and it's actually looking like a Spitfire now. Lovely lines here. These wing pieces are a little bit loose on top, so I've glued around the perimeter of the wings, but for some reason they don't quite lay flat enough to touch those internal um, spars that we saw when we made the ammunition base. So I did have to go back in there with a bit of glue on a piece of card and sort of insert the card in the gap and try and smear some glue there and clamp down the tops of those wings so they were nice and secure. You can also see the fit here at the back of the cockpit on the underside isn't great and that's definitely going to need a bit of filling and sanding. We have this two-piece panel which goes together underneath the engine. It's got some guiding tabs to help you align the parts. However, I do want to do something with that seam because it will sort of be visible if you're looking in the side of the engine and you look down. It's not completely hidden by the engine itself. This piece was a very snug fit as it pushes into the underside of the wing piece there. As for the engine bay covers, these can be either attached or left off, but they're not really designed to be uh, removed and replaced, removed and replaced. There's no way of doing that. There's no magnets or anything. And they're unlikely to just balance in place. So the approach I'm likely to take is to glue one on and leave the other one off. However, before we do that, underneath those, we need to have this green framing for the engine. This is quite a difficult looking step and everything needs to line up correctly of course. Now we do have some fairly good guidance there at the top because the exhausts go through the green framing into the engine block. 
The only thing I'm slightly worried about here is this bit at the bottom, which seems quite um, seems quite rounded and quite soft, and it seems to stick out quite a bit. It's hard to tell really during dry fitting whether it sticks out too much and will therefore push the engine panel out some more. I did have some trouble putting the top panel on too, but I think that's because I've got some filler on the inside of that that needs sanding back still, which accounts for that slight gap at the front. The tolerances here are also fine that even a small amount of thinner would make a big difference. Here is one of the undercarriage legs. Quite a sturdy looking piece and they have this keyed um, connector pin there which goes into an equally keyed hole in the uh, wheel well. I'm not going to fit them yet but I'm just going to show you how they go in. Hopefully that will provide a really strong connection which means these things won't be snapping or bending. Looking at the landing gear and Airfix have done the same thing as they have in other areas of the kit, I've really gone to town with the research. We've got several different versions of the uh, wheels here, depending on, of course, on your paint scheme. I'm doing version B. So we have the five-spoked, the four-spoked, and the solid wheel, plus this very sturdy-looking leg. And there's only this single piece of detail to add to it, which is really nice. I don't like adding dozens of small pieces to the uh, landing gear. Our landing gear door has three eject pin marks down it, but they are hidden perfectly by that leg. And in fact, there are some small indentations in that door to help the leg line up perfectly. The wingtips are dead easy to fit with just your standard top and bottom pieces. We do have the options of the um, clipped wings for one of the variants, presumably the desert version, I think. Equally, we have different versions of the elevators for the different schemes in the kit, and also a variant of the rudder. All of those include a movable trim tab. Normally, I wouldn't be too bothered about the uh, movement of those, and in fact, I didn't really care about it when I made these, but it just happened that when I put my glue in, but it just so happened that even after I glued the pieces together, the trim tabs did still move. The final addition in this area is the flaps. They can be positioned up or down. If they're up, then we put these sort of uh, blank panels on the top side of the wings. If they're down, we have a bit more of a, an opening mechanism. But I'm going to have the flaps up on this. Here's our Aerolon. I did struggle slightly to get these top and bottom halves to lay flat on top of each other. In the end it seemed it wasn't that rod which goes inside which was causing the problem, but there was just a small amount of extra height on uh, these pieces, perhaps slightly from those ejector pin marks around the edge of them. So a small amount of sanding down there, and they went together much better. So here are the flaps being put into place. You'll notice I painted the insides green, that's because originally I was going to have the flaps down but then I decided to have them up. The final wingtip addition is the cannons. With pieces like this, I always like to leave the uh, sprue connection nubs in place until we've got the two halves together, and then cut them off as one. The reason for that is, if I have them as separate pieces, you can sometimes cut uh, into the edge of the piece, and you end up with a sort of a dint or a hole when you join the two pieces together. Okay, and that is really most of the building done now for our Spitfire. It's actually looking like a Spitfire, which is great. The next step is going to be some masking and then getting the paint down. Unfortunately, at the moment, I'm not really able to paint, or certainly not airbrush, because I've got stitches in my face and I can't wear a respirator because they're right above my eye, which is right where my respirator strap goes. So it will be a while before I get any paint down on this Spitfire, unfortunately. However, I have been using my time wisely and I've got some more build videos to come. And of course, I've got a whole host of models now lined up, ready to airbrush when I am able to do so. So before I go, let me say thank you to everyone and special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. 
I hope everyone has enjoyed this video and I look forward to getting the paint down in the next update to the Spitfire whenever that may be. So until then, thank you for watching and have fun modelling.